hello everyone hope you all are doing good and in this video we are going to cover that uh, how and why you should learn cloud how cloud came into picture and which uh, cloud you should select and how to do certifications uh, okay so before uh, like we understand how to start our cloud journey we have to first understand that uh, why we actually need cloud okay uh, so this is a really fascinating story or like background which you should all know as an SZ. Okay, so first thing is that uh, like right now if you are working in QA. So that means like there are certain uh, profiles like pure DevOps profile like cloud engineer. Okay, and parallelly like we have a development team here. Okay, so these are all different roles, but with passage of time, like they should also know how the cloud is working and basic uh, stuff. Right now, like few years back, the CI/CD part was taken care entirely by a DevOps team. Okay, that what DevOps actually means, like development plus operations okay but nowadays if you see even like qa guys are uh, building the pipelines and uh, deploying the ci cd part so that means like within time uh, that certain part of devops uh, is needed for qa so similarly what is happening right now is that uh, like it is kind of a necessary for a qa or development guy to understand at least the basic of uh, cloud so we are going to discuss the same that uh, how you are uh, you have like if you are currently working as a QA or developer so how you can transition and know at least the basics one more thing which like we can discuss is that uh, we have certain environments so let's say you have a client okay let's discuss it over here so we have a client and uh, he gave us a project to build so we have our it or development team over here so what was happening previously is that uh, we have physical servers so company has purchased physical server and let's say this is the development environment and this is our qa environment and uh, this is uat and finally we are going to test our code in production so what is what are these these are certain test bed okay what is a test bed test bed is like different set of servers this is nothing but like different configurations similarly um, how can I give an example that uh, when you go to a market to buy a vegetable if you have uh, like if you have to buy a few vegetables then you're going to take a smaller bag and um, if you expect that uh, okay you are going to mall to like purchase bigger thing so that in that way like uh, you will carry a bigger handbag so similarly like uh, based on the requirement we have our different uh, like test bags test bags okay so right now like if we have a server so you have understood this part like everything these are all different servers okay and uh, to maintain a server let's say let's take a classic example of CBSE okay and uh, when the 10th and 12th results are declared so you have must the heard the term that okay the server are, are crashed and we are not able to view our result it used to happen with IRCTC also with uh, like growing number of requests their server used to crash okay so what was happening in case of CBSE is that all through their like all through the year hardly um, like very few people actually go to their website okay but okay so this is uh, like one two these are the months but in the month of April when they announced the result like April of or May like goes like this okay and come back like this and this it goes like this 
okay so just for the sake of this spike they have to maintain like they have to purchase additional servers and at least like they have to block this much of time and uh, try to under, try to understand guys that uh, deployment of physical servers is not an easy task and you have to actually like either you have to give it to third party uh, or you have to maintain them yourself okay so like this is a hard part so this is one of the cases where aws comes like aws or any other cloud services come into picture and uh, you can very easily deploy your application and scale it so the scaling part is very much like it's a very big positive of uh, the cloud services okay the second thing is reliability that you have your physical services server in your premises or third party and there can like mishappening it can happen in your office let's say fire so in that like two to three days your entire thing will be gone down your app live application is down so that is also one of the thing and uh, similarly like when i was giving this example then you have to maintain like this uh, these servers like different kind of servers okay so what is happening right now is that in a single click like the fourth part is in a single click you can deploy a machine in mumbai region or singapore region and just try to imagine that you have purchased your physical like your physical space somewhere okay and within seconds you are able to access it and you can actually scale it to something that you cannot even imagine so that is really fascinating for me and that is why we should learn cloud because gone are the days when people used to buy and maintain servers now everything in future like right now the uh, phase is in transition phase okay so companies are trying to move into cloud but in the maybe two or three or five years from now every new organization when they'll need servers they'll obviously like uh, go to any cloud uh, service and purchase that and in that like 70% of the market is captured by AWS and rest all are like uh, Google cloud is also good but like right now 70% of the market is with AWS so that's why like most of the guys go with this and uh, I have also like studied this and uh, we can like see how we are going to learn it okay so i have covered this part that why to learn cloud is that this is the future plus um, scalability so one more example i can remember is that uh, when you have large amount of guests in your home so you don't buy a new house you actually rent out a place so this is a similar like a classic example of uh, what is cloud it's kind of a hotel where according to the number of guests you can like buy rooms and additional services okay so scalability reliability and pretty like these are the basics which okay there are like 10 or hundreds of positive why you should move to cloud now coming to practitioner course okay so in this like any practitioner course of uh, either AWS or GCP what they tell is different kind of services and right now in AWS there are 100 plus services so like just to name a very like famous one are the EC2s so this is nothing but an elastic compute and uh, in that it's a kind of physical computer to you like they will provide a physical machine and which you can um, like IP yeah they'll give you an IP and everything else and apart from that you have like S3 lambda services okay S3 is like storing then these are very famous ones and uh, in the practitioner course so you have to understand what like the famous services do and how they are related to each other that's it nothing like fancy over there but it's like really an 
essential nowadays to have a basic uh, like practitioner certification that will really like help you and uh, like time required for certification so firstly uh, we will see the practitioner one so i personally feel within one month one to two months is enough for a guy to like crack aws practitioner and uh, the second one uh, solution architect like three to six months depending upon how your workload is and this amount is pretty much like in this you can clear the certification and right now i cannot comment on the uh, like advanced one what do you what we call like proficient or like there is a third part of also so i'm for the sake i'm writing it advance and for this i feel like you need at least one year okay so and once you have made up your mind like go for the practitioner one it is really helpful and nowadays organization are also looking for cross functional so again like let's let's discuss that right now if you see the job description jd of an organization like testing is one thing like obviously you should be good in testing apart from that what they are expecting is that like api basic sql is also kind of mandatory right now okay apart from that like with this like git is also kind of mandatory okay now with this if you can add some cloud flavor that is really going to boost up your um, like profile and um, that will surely uh, help you in grabbing and job also okay now coming to the last part that how you can save uh, money on certification so this is something which i have read somewhere that right now uh, like the uh, practitioner one is of 100 dollars and this one goes to 150 dollar okay but the be, like the good part is that they have their practice set at 20 dollar so if you can crack like just before giving the exam or let's say you are short on cash and uh, like want to showcase uh, showcase your talent that in that, that then in that case like um, you can just like crack the practice set and tell the other organization that okay like right now i'm short on cash and uh, like see i have done this uh, practice okay practice set so if you can uh, like crack it you can simply tell everyone that okay like i have the potential to crack it and maybe in future um, i can like do the actual certification so i hope guys uh, this uh, like video is going to help you to start a uh, transition like i'll not say transition your career but at least uh, that's an basic essential which um, every cloud every qa engineer um, should know so that's how i feel and comment down below if you don't uh, like agree with me or like you want an explanation of uh, anything okay so i'll try to answer your doubts over there uh, thank you guys